artist! Today I'll be showing you guys how to paint a realistic dessert by using watercolors. Yeah, as stated on the title, we're gonna make a strawberry tart. So let's just dive into it. This time we're not working with loose watercolor painting, which means you will need to sketch out the shapes of the strawberry tart before beginning the coloring process. So get a pencil, any pencil would do, and start by sketching this round shaped cake at the bottom. The strawberries will be sitting at the top. One piece, two pieces, and then I add another above the cream. In between these whipped cream toppings, there will be a square label and a spiral chocolate piece as a yummy ornament. Once you're about to paint with watercolor, make sure to clean out some of the harsh lines so it isn't too apparent. Now I'm going to start with the lightest color tone within the lightest object, which is the white cream swirlies. I'm creating the first mixture of the light gray color by combining purple and black and then diluting both colors with lots of white. I apply the color in this beautiful swirling pattern to give the white cream its shape. Next, I'm painting the lightest parts of the sponge cake, which are mostly the sides where there are some reflections. I'm using a really pale yellow-brown color by mixing yellow ochre, lemon yellow, and burnt sienna, and then spreading them evenly onto the cake. As for the strawberries, I'm going to use a combination of brilliant red and orange with added water to create a light shade. As I paint the strawberry, I leave out some white spaces here and there and also some very large areas where I imagine a lot of light is hitting. As we go, I want to mention that this step is all about covering every object with the lightest tone of each part. So now we continue to paint the top surface of the sponge cake with something dark but lighter than jet black color. So I'm using burnt sienna and violet. Remember to leave out some white areas for bright highlights. Then we continue with burnt sienna for the chocolate swirl and a combination of green and yellow paint for the strawberry leaves. Again, I want to mention that this painting is all about layering. Light washes first and then gradually add more paint as each layer dries. So once we are done with the first layer, let's build up the object with a more intense color. Here I'm mixing red and orange. As for the water, I'm just adding a small amount to dilute both colors and it's good to go to spread all over the strawberry. But remember that we still want the previous layer to show through so make sure to leave some areas untouched, particularly certain sections where the highlight will take place. And now, I'm just going to continue painting with the same method for the rest of the strawberries. For the leaves, mix a little bit of yellow with green and then take a small brush and start brushing the green color onto some parts of the leaves, particularly near the edges. Use the tip of your brush to do this. You don't have to overthink on where to be exact. Just make sure to have light and darker parts to give a sense of depth. And here what I'm doing is redefining the shape of the swirl chocolate decor with the darker tone. Blend together burnt umber and burnt sienna for the shadow and leave out the base color for the highlight. Near the back area where I imagine the light is coming from, you can add a bit of contrast using a warmer shade. Mine is the mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre with lots of white. Still with the same color, only this time with a bigger brush, it's time for us to work on the sponge cake. Third step. 
step is basically the last layer of pigment, which is the darkest one, using the least amount of water mixed with the pigment, and then adding more details for each object to demonstrate a range of textures. Brilliant red and a bit of orange for the strawberry, only this time just a tiny amount of water to activate the paint. For the placement of the color, I'm referring back and forth upon the reference photo I found on Pinterest as my main guideline. So by sticking up the photograph, the way I'm illustrating the dessert might resemble the shape, color, shadows, and highlights of the actual object. Near the corners and creases, some parts of the strawberries are completely dark. You can add a bit of violet into the red-orange mixture to make a slightly darker color. Done with the color scheme, next thing we need to do is to paint the strawberries grooves using small oval shapes. I'm just picking up my dark violet mixture, the darkest we've got so far, to be added onto the top surface of the sponge cake so that we have great contrast and depth in the overall painting. Also, don't forget to paint the darker part of the cake with thicker consistency for a little bit of contrast. For this part, make sure you don't overwork your brush strokes. With your finest brush, use dark brown to make the shadow on the bottom part. It suggests the volume and thickness of the sponge cake sitting above it. Now for the pad on the base of the cake, I'm applying yellow paint right on the bottom of the cake. Almost there my friends. Using a light gray color, I'm going to cast a shadow underneath the dessert. And then right at the bottom of the cake, I'm adding a shadow that's about two levels darker. Entering the last step where I'm about to utilize two different mediums, gouache, paint, and a drawing pen. 
With the white gouache paint, I'm going to paint some of the highlights on the strawberries' grooves that I've accidentally gone over with paint. At this stage, I find that gouache is particularly helpful to cover up watercolor due to its thicker consistency. I also want to define the shape of the cake's rim with more highlight by taking a soft yellow gouache paint mixture with the smallest round brush that I have. For the final touch, let's write down the bakery label. It could be your favorite local bakery or any notable one like La Dure or Paris Baguette. And that's all my friends. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Lastly, if you want more watercolor tutorials like this, be sure to comment down below so that we understand your preference. Bye!